All right, so today we're gonna go over some essentials of what to pack for a snowmobiling trip. We're gonna cover everything from the type of gloves, whether or not you need liners, depending on how good the hand warmers are on the sled you're gonna ride, <clears throat> to what thermals not to wear, <laughs> uh, socks, mittens, uh, mid-layer, under-layer, what extra uh, things to pack should you get into an emergency situation, um, and then we're going to talk about the base items, which are the most important items, which are your jacket and bibs. So the first thing, I'm going to go in order of importance here. The most important thing, obviously, is your jacket and bibs. And if you saw any of my other reviews, you know that I reviewed this ski jacket last year because I wanted a ski jacket that I could use for both skiing and snowmobiling. The most important thing in a snowmobiling jacket is that you have one that's windproof and waterproof. The reason that you want windproof, obviously, is, is very obvious because of the speeds that you're going to be riding at, and you're going to get a lot of wind. <clears throat> Crosswinds come up, creep in behind the windshield, the next thing you know, you're, uh, you're going to be getting a draft. The other thing is, the heat of the snowmobile generates a lot of um, water in a way, which basically can just be melted snow, everything from stuff being flung up from the track to if you're riding in powder and you get snow underneath your back or on top of the seat, it's gonna melt from the body heat, from your body heat. If you're not wearing windproof and waterproof gear, it's gonna seep through and then you're gonna be cold from the inside out. It'll ruin your day. Um, the other really important thing is, oh, as far as, in regards to jackets, as long as you can zip off your hood so that you can have a hel helmet compatible collar, you're in pretty good shape. Otherwise than that, as long as you have a high-end jacket uh, that's good quality, you, the only thing you want to know is how much Thinsulate it has in it, which is basically how thick the insulation is. Uh, dedicated snowmobile jackets will have anywhere from 200 to 400 grams of Thinsulate. This spider jacket, as you can see in the spider uh, review, if you go check on it at cleverleverage.com, has 100 grams of Thinsulate. So on really cold days or riding in below zero weather, you really need to be careful of what thermals you wear and make sure that you're wearing a base layer and a mid layer in order for this to insulate you well enough. But the most important part is that it's waterproof, breathable, and uh, windproof. That will give you a good outer shell. And that's all you need to do. Uh, that's all you really need to keep cool and dry. And you can stay dry and and not sweat. You won't get cold as long as you have the right layers underneath that. The other thing that's really important when packing for a snowmobile trip is to not wear ski pants. And I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> When you wear ski pants, they're cut off. I don't know if the camera goes that low, but they're cut off here at the waist, even the ones with the little V in the back. And if you're wearing a jacket that doesn't have a drawstring snow skirt to really keep things tight there, what can happen is when you're at speed and your arms are out like this, the back of the jacket will kind of flail open a little bit. And when that happens, you get a draft. And when you get a draft, there's nothing that you can do to close that. and It'll go right up your back and get right in. If you're riding in a, in a, on a day where it's below zero, you're going to get really cold really fast. So the most important reason to get bibs is because they're kind of like overalls. They go up chest height in the front, and they go up back height in the back. So if, for example, you're wearing a jacket that doesn't have a, a drawstring snow skirt, and wind goes up, you're still protected. It doesn't go straight through to the windproof layers, windproof, waterproof, breathable. The other thing is, with bibs, usually they're easier to get on and off because they will have zippered legs, or at least half zippers, with a snappable snow skirt that goes around the boot. So, in the event that you are, uh, what would you call it, getting ready or getting geared up, it's a lot easier to get dressed and then still be able to get your boots on and off. And then this still gives you the protection if you were to get a sled stuck or you're in chest deep snow, you still have all the protection even if you take your, take your jacket off to uh, be protected from the elements. So super important to wear bibs. I would definitely pack um, at least one set of those. These are spider bibs. You can see my review about those on the blog on cleverleverage.com. And then as a backup, I do this when I travel on the airplanes. This is a packable down jacket. You can always take something like this as an extra layer or for a lot of reasons really, but you can pack up something like this and just shove it in the sled. And then if you were to deploy this and put it on, you'd have an extra 100 to 150 grams of insulation that you could wear at any time. Not as an outer layer, but as an inner layer. 
The next thing that's going to be really important is your hands and feet. If your hands and feet get cold, your trip is pretty much going to be ruined. You're going to be miserable and you won't be happy and it's very difficult because they're smaller uh, parts of your body. It's very difficult to get them warmed up again. So you want to start with a set of gloves that are Gore-Tex gloves or some other equivalent of waterproofing. This will make sure that if you are doing something with the sled and your hand goes in the snow, it doesn't drench the glove and get wet from the inside out like we talked about with the other stuff. That's very, very important. It's also important to get gloves that come with liners. Now, you won't have to wear the liners all the time. Um, if, you're having a, if you're riding a brand new sled that has really hot hand warmers, hello, I can't talk today. If you're riding a brand new sled that has really hot hand warmers, you most likely won't even need the liners if you have good gloves. The biggest thing is just that they're windproof and waterproof so that when your hands come into contact with snow or melted snow, they don't get wet so that the insulation on the inside, <clears throat> this fleece lining here, doesn't get soaked. Your hands might sweat a little bit, but you should be able to control the hand and thumb warmers uh, adequately to, uh, to stop that. One of the things that you'd want to pack as essentials is extra hand warmers. If your hands ever get cold, your feet ever get cold, or you break down or anything like that, you can just snap a couple of these guys, stick them in the glove, slip them in the boot, and uh, you'll be good to go. What do we got going on over here? Sorry, I don't want the computer to shut off because we're going to edit this video afterwards, or upload it, sorry. Um, next thing is <clears throat> your underlayers. This is probably, aside from having a, a waterproof and a windproof breathable shell, outerwear. This is the second most important thing of the whole deal. If you're packing for a snowmobile trip, you want a wide variety of base layers and mid layers, depending on what the temperature is going to be. Where I go and ride in Maine, uh, some days it can be 40 degrees and the next day it could be negative 10 or 10 below zero. <clears throat> now, this year I experimented with the spider stuff and I've never had that before. Uh, one day I was cold and I think the reason, well, one of the ways that you can avoid that is I bought this Champion Warmest base layer and it really just isn't thick enough. It's, it's moisture, uh, not moisture resistant, I was gonna say. It's moisture wicking. So there's, there's two things that you want from base layers and mid layers. On your base layer that's close to your skin, you must have a moisture wicking layer so that if you do sweat, it absorbs it and expels it away because if you get wet from the inside out and you sweat and then that freezes, you're going to be super cold and there's nothing that you can do about it until you get those dried out. The only way to really dry them out is to take them off and hang them over a fire or a stove or something like that, put them in a dryer. But um, usually when you're out in the woods, you don't have those kind of luxuries. So I was not happy with these base layers and mid layers. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna buy. I'll link it up in the post. You gotta go to the post to, uh, to find it. But below the video, I'll put a link to what I'm gonna buy for next year. And really what you want is a lightweight base layer, very similar to this, or <clears throat> a heavier weight base layer and forget the mid layer. Most of the time you use a compression fit, ultra lightweight base layer. And then over the top of that, it would be like a really thin fleece mid layer or something else that has a little bit more insulating property to it. So these can be super, super important. If you're a person that is not tolerant to the cold very well, I would highly recommend um, I think the company is called 30 Below, or there's a couple of them actually, Polar Tech, 30 Below. I'll link them up in the blog post. You can get them on Amazon. They're not that expensive, 30, 40 bucks for a top and a bottom. And uh, that will ensure that as long as you have a waterproof shell for your snowmobiling trip, you will be warm. The other thing is socks. The moisture wicking socks are going to keep your feet from sweating. Unfortunately, I don't have my giant Sorel boots that are rated to like negative 40 below zero. That's what I wear snowmobiling. They're a little bit too clunky, but my feet are never cold. And they're, they're knee-high boots so that if I get off the sled and I'm tromping around through snow, I don't have to uh, worry about getting snow over the top of the, the um, boots, even though my bibs snap down around them. Sometimes snow can still get in there if you wear short ankle-high ankle, uh, ankle -high snowmobile boots. So I recommend wearing those, like uh, some type of Sorel or a Klim snowmobile boot or something like that that's very well insulated. The, um, actually, let me show you the difference. I have, I have some old style wool socks from back in the day. These are probably 10 or 15 years old. Now these are traditional wool socks and just like the underlayers or the base layers, 
These are super warm, but they're not breathable at all. So your feet sweat like a mofo in these, and there's nowhere for that moisture to go. And what happens is, it doesn't usually happen in the Sorel boots because they're so well insulated, but what would happen is if you did start to get some cold to creep in, it would start to freeze that moisture and your feet would be cold because they're not dry. So it's very important if you wanna wear wool socks, these are spider socks, but you can also use some cheaper socks either from Amazon or Target or wherever. You want moisture wicking socks as a base sock layer. And then if you think your feet are gonna be cold, put the wool over that so that there's some uh, moisture wicking before the non-breathable insulation. Makes a huge difference. The other thing you'll want to pack for your snowmobiling trips like out on the trail is a little set of mittens or whatchamacallit gloves that tuck right inside a jacket pocket and a beanie. <clears throat> so that way if you stop at a beautiful place actually like this is a place in Maine where we snowmobile too. This is in the summertime but we've also snowmobiled there. When you stop you really want to enjoy the scenery and it's not always comfortable to have these clunky gloves on and try to work a camera or take pictures and maybe have a snack and a drink with everybody it's really really nice to be able to open your jacket pocket slip on these and then have the mobility of of your normal fingers to grab onto stuff but then it's usually windy in places like this have a little bit of protection uh, for your fingers so that they don't get cold especially if you're holding on to a, a cold beverage uh, or something like that. Same thing with the beanie. You're going to want to shed the helmet. You're going to want to shed the balaclava because you look like you're going to rob somebody um, otherwise. <clears throat> and put a beanie on just to keep your head warm. Aside from that, there are a couple essentials that you should always have in your, your back jacket pocket. Um, I don't have them in there right now. One of the things and one of the things that makes the article funny is a tampon. Even guys should carry a tampon, but not for the reasons that you think. Um, if you get stranded on the side of a trail, most likely someone will have some form of gas still left in a sled, even if you crash it. You can open a tampon, which automatically seals itself in a plastic capsule. It's the smallest, lightest, water resistant from being in the plastic uh, container or whatever thing that you can just toss in your jacket pocket that's cheap <clears throat> to use as a fire starter. So you need two things. You need a fire starting flint, which I'll link to in the blog post and below the video. There's one that's really, really good, has thousands of great reviews, and a tampon. You take the tampon out of the capsule, dangle it by the string, dip it in the gas tank, put it on the ground, make yourself a little fire pit, get some frozen sticks from some nearby trees, put them over there, do the, flight, the fire flint, and boom, you got a fire. You guys will be warm. No one will have to uh, you know, start to freak out if you have to wait a while for people to be passing by. The other thing is, look at the review I did of this Streamlight flashlight on um, uh, cleverleverage.com on my blog. This is a very small flashlight, but it's 650 lumens. You want a light like this if you're going to be stranded out uh, in the middle of nowhere and it gets dark. Uh, it's very helpful to start a fire, to work on sleds, to dig yourself out if you get stuck. That and the hand warmers. These plus cliff bars or lara bars, some type of, it's very difficult to take water but you can always melt snow and drink it so you don't really need to take water uh, as an essential uh, i just drink the snow the reason why is usually over the years when i've taken beverages they always end up freezing in the back of the sled anyway so they're kind of like you know just melt snow i'm talking about like borderline survival situations say we broke down this well actually a good example of this if you watch my other youtube videos we were riding uh up to east kennebago back from rangeley in maine this past year and there was a guy and his son stuck on the side of the trail and it was late in the day it was probably five o'clock the sun was going down no one else was really coming by and they had either run out of gas or broken down <clears throat> a good example and made me rethink what should be in my jacket uh, or what i should pack for my snowmobile trips on my person is uh if that would have been me and no one came by what would i would have wanted i would have wanted fire and i would have wanted light and i would have wanted a snack i can make water from the snow I can make a fire, but it's going to be damn difficult without a tampon, a little bit of gasoline, and a, a fire starter. That would be a bitch. And it's difficult to make light uh, aside from fire that you can take with you. So it would be super useful to have the tampon, the flashlight, the fire starting flint, and a couple packs of these hand warmers in case somebody's hands or feet got really cold and we could warm them up while this, the fire was starting to warm. And then you want cliff bars, lara bars, or something just stuffed in your jacket pockets so that if you stop at a scenic place, you can have a snack. Or if you get stranded somewhere, you have something that you can ration just to keep everybody fueled up. I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of what to pack for your snowmobiling trip. 
There's lots of other stuff like um, all the stuff that you would just assume. You need a, uh, unfortunately I don't bring all of my snowmobile gear back home to Florida, so I can't show you a helmet configuration with a balaclava or a partial balaclava. I can mention a couple different things. If you wear a full balaclava, which is basically like a beanie over your head with eye and mouth cutouts, look like you're gonna rob somebody. Usually if you're gonna rent sleds or you're gonna use a rented helmet, you won't wanna wear a full headed balaclava because the helmets aren't tailored to you and they're gonna to fit too tight if you wear something over your entire head. You'll wanna wear what's called a half balaclava, which is basically, essentially it's a neck warmer <clears throat> that you can pull up or Velcro up over the nose and goes around your ears and then the top half of your head is open. So when you put the helmet on, it doesn't make the helmet fit extra tight because if your head is squeezed and you go out riding in the cold, you got less blood flow to the brain, you're probably likely to get a headache and you're just generally not gonna be comfortable and the most important thing to enjoying your snowmobile trips is to be comfortable. So that's what I would recommend. Unfortunately, I don't have my head sock or my neck warmer combination to show you, but personally, I prefer a non full headed balaclava. I prefer a half balaclava or a neck warmer. And that makes a huge difference depending on what jacket you use also. I was wearing the spider jacket this last year and it has the padded, um, inner liner on the collar. So it's fine if this rubs up against my face, but most snowmobile jackets are rough and coarse, and you want something between your neck, chin area, and the jacket itself, because it's gonna rub like crazy, and usually your shirts stop right here. You're not gonna be wearing a turtleneck. Um, that's what I would personally recommend, is at least a neck warmer and a half balaclava. That'll give you a little bit of flexibility. Um, other than that, Helmets are pretty standard. I'd go with a full face helmet if you're at a rental place and you either have the option for a full face or open face. I'd go with a full face. It gives you better wind protection should you get in an accident or a crash or bang into a tree just slightly. It's happened to all of us. Um, your face is protected and more than likely you won't get hurt. You can finish your trip and have a great time. Aside from that, um, the only other thing that I don't have to show you are my boots, but I'll link up some boots below and in the blog post when I post this later on, uh, of some boots that I think are, are good for snowmobiling if you're looking to buy some equipment. Other than that, just make sure you have the extra essentials and uh, have a great time out on those trails. Let me know where you're going. Let me know in the comments and uh, what kind of gear set up you're running. If you have any advice for me or have any tips, uh, tools, tips and tricks of the trade, maybe you've been a snowmobiler for 25 years or more, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you.